Here's a crazy new feature that's coming to Apple Watch in WatchOS 8. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And Apple has released WatchOS 8 to the masses, and it brings a bunch of new features, including fall detection during workouts, several new watch faces, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some new accessibility features that now allow you to control your Apple Watch with the hand that is wearing it by doing things like clenching your fist or tapping your fingers. It is incredibly cool and has profound implications. So let's go ahead and dive into this thing. Apple has made Assistive Touch an accessibility feature on iOS and iPadOS for quite a while now, but now it's come to Apple Watch. And honestly, it's just incredibly cool how they make this work. While you were wearing your Apple Watch on your wrist, you could probably tell which wrist I wear my Apple Watch on, uh, you're able to control it by doing things like tapping your fingers, double tapping your fingers, or clenching a fist. You can answer calls, go through menus, and pull up action menus anywhere in the OS. Now, it's really cool to talk about, but it's probably better just to show you how it works and how to set it up. Before we get any deeper into all this, I gotta take a moment and take our sponsor for this video, Titan. So here's the deal. You could go out there, pick and choose using some other apps and buy some stocks yourself. The same way you could go and build your house yourself. You'd buy the materials and, and do the research and learn how to do it and figure out the best drywall or insulation that makes. But why would you do that? Why would you do that to yourself, to your house and to your investments, especially when there is a team of battle-tested investors that are ready to invest on your behalf? Enter Titan. Titan is an elite investment firm, but it's designed for the everyday investor. It aims to deliver the best in the world investment experience, but in a way that's approachable and accessible for all levels of income. The team built an app, a mobile app, instead of an ETF or a mutual fund, because it allows them to more easily explain to you how they're managing your money and what they're doing. I mean, it all starts with this amazing onboarding experience where they actually walk you through exactly what they're doing, how the app works, how they're making decisions. It's a crazy good experience to date. Titan manages over $600 million for over 30,000 clients, and their unique investment strategy has allowed them to outperform all major indexes and robo-advisors since its inception. Aside from those record-shattering returns, there are no performance fees, no lockups, and a low flat rate advisory fee. And it only takes 100 bucks to get started. Personally, I'm invested in Titan's flagship and crypto portfolios. Get started today at titan.com slash AI and get your first three months of expert investment management for zero fees. That's titan.com slash AI for three months free. titan.com slash AI. Let me know what you guys think and thanks again to Titan for sponsoring this video. So first, let's walk through the different gestures that you can use with assistive touch. There are four gestures that you can use. There's tapping your fingers, there's double tapping your fingers, there's clenching your fist, and there's double clenching your fists. Those are the four gestures that you have. Tapping your fingers by default will just move to the next item or move forward. Double tapping will go backward. Clenching is basically selecting, and double clenching will pull up the action menu or activate assistive touch. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your watch is in active mode. That just means that screen is lit up. If I let my wrist go for just a moment or two here, you're gonna see that the screen will go darker, which means it's still, uh, still on because of the always on display, but it's not active, it's inactive at the moment. So my squeezes, they're not gonna do anything at all. So I can rotate my wrist, bring it back up, and you'll see that blue ring, letting me know that assistive touch is currently active. If I double squeeze now, well, got to pull it back up again. If I double squeeze now, you'll see an on-screen element be selected. Now I can just tap with my fingers to move through the different on-screen elements until I decide what I want to do. Do I want to look at the battery, my clock, do I want to look at my activity rings, notifications there at the top, calendar, or how about my blood sugar? If I want to select that, I can just clench my wrist or my hand and pull up my Dexcom G6 app. 
It's a pretty good looking blood sugar for the day. Now I need to use my digital crown to get back to my main menu. So to do that, I need to double click my wrist, double clench my wrist to pull up the action menu. You can see here at the bottom, I can go to my digital crown, I can go to the system settings, I can rotate my digital crown by scrolling up, I can scroll down, I can use interaction, I can auto scroll, next up is sleeping the display, or exiting out of the menu altogether. Go all the way back to the beginning, and we're gonna select that digital crown, it's gonna click, and go back to my Apple Watch home screen. Let's see how some of those different elements work. So I can tap again to go forward, I can double tap and it'll go backward through that list. If we go forward here, how about we go to scroll? I can scroll up if I select that. It can change the timeline there on my CGM because that's what happens when you scroll the digital crown. So that way you can interact the digital crown without ever having to actually use your other hand. If we keep going through this list, there's also this one that's for interaction, which is essentially kind of like using a mouse and you have the option to actually pull up um, multiple options for this and if we go to that first one that is the actual cursor that uses your wrist movements so if I select the motion pointer I can actually tilt my wrist around to control where that is so if I need to click anything on the screen or interact with my Apple Watch and any of those default options don't work I can use this and as I hover over you can see I'm hovering over the blood sugar up there on the top left it's actually clicking on it you can see how it's tapping and holding on those elements. Of course, in the Dexcom app, there's nothing you can really do. There's nothing to click on really, but that is how you can use those uh, different elements on screen if it's not one of the basic controls. If I double click my wrist again, double clinch, I can go ahead and select the digital crown, go back there to my Apple Watch home screen. So let's look at how to set up assistive touch and accessibility features here on my Apple Watch with Watch OS 8. We can just use Siri, but open the settings app. Just a little bit easier that way. Now if we scroll down, I can get to accessibility. Within accessibility, I wanna scroll down again, and towards the bottom, we have assistive touch. That is what we are going to be turning on. Assistive touch is enabled here, and here are my hand gestures, and you can customize these options. So maybe pinch instead of going forward, I want to go back or tap or open up the action menu. There's also system controls like opening notification center or control center, showing all my apps, opening Apple Pay. So you could create a shortcut where just double clenching your wrist opens Apple Pay and you can do so one handed without ever having to use your other hand. If we keep scrolling down, we can go back to the defaults and there's also activ activation gestures, which is the double clench that we talked about there at the beginning. And then the last option is for enabling quick actions. So boom, that is it. That is how you can control your Apple Watch just by tapping your fingers, clenching your wrist. I think this is incredible. It's gonna be huge for those that need these accessibility features that it's just important for them to be able to use Apple Watch, but it can also add new abilities for the rest of us that just want new ways to control the Apple Watch uh, in different environments. These are crazy cool changes and I can't wait for you guys to try it out for yourselves. Let me know over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU if you tried the new accessibility features for Apple Watch and what you think of assistive touch.